Hey guys, if you really like my style of teaching and you learn a lot from my guides, you can learn even more and improve even quicker from my coaching style. And you can find that, add me on Discord through my tag down in the description below. My cat Felix says, please buy his coaching. He's a really good teacher. Yeah. Woo. Okay guys, so add me up and message me and we'll talk more on Discord. Enjoy the video guys, peace. Hey guys, so in today's video I'm gonna be teaching you my top five tips in order to help you quickly reach Immortal. So a lot of these tips are going to be very important. Some of them you may or may not have heard before. Others are going to be less important, but still very important that you apply it on a consistent basis. If you're not like, you know, thinking of these things, then it's going to hold you back. So the first tip, especially for those of you that are dualists out there is going to be, understand when and why you are uh, pushing or peaking, right? So for duelists, I think a lot of us feel like we need to be pushing all the time. We need to be peaking everything. For example, we're defending and then we're in B main. We're like, we're peaking. Okay, there's nobody here. So I'm just gonna start pushing. You know, some of you probably play like this and some of you actually probably do the opposite. Some of you probably sit all the way back here. And as, as a duelist, right? You sit back here and you just wait and you'll never peak. And then by the time that they come out, you're just gonna die. So there's actually a balance, right? You need to find a balance between these two extremes instead of just one or the other. So the problem with peaking always is it becomes predictable unless you're, you know, peaking Here. different areas Here. Uh, and you're being kind of unpredictable, but still there's only four areas you can really peak. Well, technically Here. there's five because you can peak mid link or top mid. Um, but still there's only so many places you can peak. And at some point at some rank, it's going to become predictable. So try to find the balance, right? And this is, you also need to be adaptable. You need to understand that the enemies you're playing against are going to be different each game. And so for example, if I peek here and then it's like a five man rush, obviously that's not something you necessarily want to peek in all the time, peek into all the time. So however, if it's, if it's like they're really slow and they like to have one person here. lurk up, then you could take a 1v1 here pretty easily, especially with a dash. Even a 1v5, you could take a fight with a dash like this and you're out, right? The odds of them killing you mid-dash are very slim. Um, so other than that, understand when to be holding angles. Let's actually go ahead and move over to B. Uh, just to give another example, kind of give some variety, right? Variety on my channel. So the alternative here is going to be, you're just peeking, you're running it down, right? And then the other extreme is going to be like you're sitting back here every single round. You never consider other alternatives. Um, okay, so the balance here is going to be so understand when to hold angles, right? Holding angles is just you're kind of you might jiggle like this or, you know, you might come out to the side yeah. here. This is an extremely strong play to do both in this map on B yeah. main and in A main. Um, holding angles is simply just the act of holding an angle. This is going to be more of a predictable angle. This is still sort of holding an angle. This is aggressive, but we do have a dash, right? So you're being kind of calculated about it. <clears throat> Another example of holding an angle might be like right here. This is a very strong angle to hold because you hold down all of this yeah. area. Again, you, you if you're a jet player, you might consider not doing this every single round because you know you, you actually do have abilities to allow you to go more aggressive like updraft and dash uh, and those smokes to get out or get in safely. Um, but the, the the point is really just make sure you're not peeking everything make sure you're not hiding back all the time and make sure you find a balance right so anyways guys i'll see you in the next tip next tip guys is going to be be creative and unpredictable with where you attack right so especially again as a duelist which i know most of you guys are even if you're not a duelist this still applies to you obviously you're not really going to be going in first but valor is a team game no matter what rank you are in okay so if you're a duelist then you can ask your team to come with you but at the end of the day, just tell your team where you're going to go. If they follow you, that's fantastic. Try to convince them too. If they don't, that's their problem, right? Don't feed, don't run it down just because they're not listening. But really what we want to do is try to take shots all over the map. So, right, we're, we're seeing if we can make something happen, open up an area on uh, toward B site. So this is how I typically clear B main. And then, so, you know, after this happens, maybe it works. Maybe someone peeks you right here in B main like this. You get a kill and then you're like, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. And then you're going to dash out switch, clear everything out, hit the switch and everything's great, right? Um, so this is great, but this will not work every time. Every time you play a scent, right? Sometimes you're going to play a scent. You're going to come toward B and then you're going to get once after right here. So what does this mean? Does this mean we should keep going B every single round? Does this mean that we should avoid B every round? No, this means we should probably go somewhere else for right now. So, you know, let's think about our alternatives on this map. And again, you can think of other areas on different maps. I can't go through every map, obviously, but for example, we could peek here, we can fight mid, and then you could just tell our team, can we just fight mid for a kill? 
And we could just do this and walk all the way up. Walk up just like this. Clear your corners. And we're basically just walking up with the intention of getting a kill. And then oftentimes, there's going to be a trip here. Oftentimes, what will happen is you'll get a kill. And then what I like to do here is either go straight toward B, depending on how far forward I am, or run back and go cat to A. Here. So this is a you know a bit of a more in-depth kind of plan, but this is just kind of how, how this map plays. Also, you can clear this out. And a lot of the time, you can actually get all the way up into their spawn here safely. And so then you're like, you can tell your team like, yo, look at me. Look where I am. Look where I am, guys. Let's go B. Let's go B. And you can you basically just have their rotations like cut off. If, they, if your team can take B here, or you can just rotate and, and push flank B, right? Um, one more thing we can do is, well, two more things we can do. We can actually here. walk up cat. This is one of my favorite things to do. Again, yet another way to attack. So we want to slowly kind of walk up. In lower ranks, cat is extremely unguarded. Listen to what I'm telling you. Cat is extremely unguarded. People do not watch this, okay? Uh, rarely do people watch this. Sometimes there's going to be that one person that always watches cat in your rank, but usually there's not people here. There's not even a trip here. But the reason that is is because no one ever pushes cat because everyone's a scaredy cat, right? Scaredy cat on cat, right? So that's why I push it. Even in Immortal, even in like Radiant games, I push this and people just don't expect it. They don't expect it until I do it. So I go like this. There might be someone here. You always got to clear the left here. But after you walk up here, right? Imagine you're in this spot and then they still don't know where you are, right? I can take my hands off my keyboard. They don't know where I am. So this means they're here. probably playing somewhere around here. And this is just going to allow you to walk up. If the glass is broken, you can even here. go heaven here and flank. But what I like to do is just walk up here and basically just look for a kill as my team is like here. maybe making noise a main or something like that. So basically, guys, the takeaway from this uh, tip is to really make sure that you're attacking from different areas. Whenever it's very easy, especially when you're frustrated or whenever you're tilted or you feel like nothing's working or you can't land shots to just keep doing the same thing or just keep doing stuff without thinking about it. But really have a reason for why you're going in these areas. Like, so if you've gone A main and B main and it just doesn't work, then the reason that you might ha tell yourself that you're going mid is to just simply get a kill, right? We, 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 we've tried to take A main or B main, guys. Let's just try to go mid now, right? So, and then vice versa for if B main didn't work twice in a row, then you might try to go A maybe instead of rushing you might go slow right so try to try to do that and that's going to lead us into our next tip which is use comms all right guys so the next tip is going to be use comms right i cannot stress enough if you know me if you've watched my channel for any amounts of time uh and watch my valent related content you know that comms and communicating with your teammates is extremely important not typing in chat not typing to the enemy players you suck bro bro that was lucky don't type to, to enemy players don't type to your teammates use your microphone use your voice say things to them that is useful and increase your chance of winning the game okay because half the like over probably half the people in this game probably in your rank don't use their mics okay this is not to demean your rank or anything this is just how it is i played in pretty much every rank and people just don't talk in some ranks like they literally do not talk okay if you can be the one person that says anything okay that says anything like okay guys can we can we try this round like that's all you could all you need to say i understand it's kind of nerve-wracking for some of you maybe you have ranked anxiety maybe you just don't want to say anything because you feel like no one else is saying anything but think about it if someone else on your team said something that's going to make you more likely to want to talk especially if you have a mic sitting right here in front of you or somewhere around your desk right so just say start saying stuff you don't have to again call whenever you call them you don't have to be like an absolute demon with with comms you don't have to be like uh, you could just say like yo he was here or yo let's go here let's go there um guys i think we should rotate you guys can we rotate let's rotate because and then you give a reason like you know um guys can we use this ult here and then push or guys i'm gonna ult this and dash in guys i'm smoke dashing in b guys i'm going up mid here. right it's very simple comms right we're not talking about like vct world cup like crazy comms like we don't have to have pro level comms but the difference is that you're actually using comms. You're not just saying nothing like everyone else in this game, okay? Even in high ranks, people often do not say stuff, right? Even in Immortal, even in Radiant, there are there are people that play this game that do not say anything throughout the entire game, okay? Do not be this person. It's possible to hit Radiant without using your, your, your comms, or without your, using your mic, but it's just, it makes the game so much harder for yourself and for... Um, and for teammates and I understand it's very easy to be tilted and to be like, oh my teammates They don't deserve my comms or Ugh, 
this is, you know, like whatever excuse you want to give, but at the end of the day, comms are extremely useful in a competitive game, in a competitive FPS game. Um, and so try to just push yourself right now if you're not if you're not currently calming, like even just small stuff, try to calm like how much you hit people for, try to calm like where you want to go, what ults are we using, what ults should we use where, where are we pushing? St basic stuff like this, right? Like this is very basic stuff. This is not complicated. This is not this is not calculus, right? We're doing very simple stuff here. So, you know, let me know if this makes sense to you guys and let's move on to the next tip. All right guys, so the next tip, and this is an extremely important and universal tip that can be applied to pretty much anyone in any rank and also in any competitive game, okay? So this is something that across my many games, so Counter-Strike, Overwatch, Overwatch 2, this game, I've noticed this in every game. I've noticed people, I've noticed myself and this holding me back, which is get control of your mentality, okay? So this kind of is similar to comms and like, it's like, if you don't get control of it, it's just gonna make your whole experience grinding and trying to improve harder. It's it's the same for any competitive game. You're you're not fighting other people, you're fighting yourself. It's an internal battle, and if you can't control your own anger, if you can't control your own um, your own internal struggles, then you're going to have a really hard time improving. It doesn't mean you can't improve, just like if you don't calm, right? You can still improve, it's just gonna be much harder. So, so what does that mean? What does improving or getting control of your mentality actually mean? This can take many forms, right? So mentality can be not getting angry at teammates or not verbally expressing that to them in comms. So like whenever something happens or whenever your teammates are already clashing, not making the situation worse, trying to actually relieve the situation, right? So if your teammates are just arguing, screaming at each other, instead of also like screaming at both of them, you could be like, guys, guys, we can still win, we can still win, right? Or something like that. Oftentimes it's out of your control and you can kind of feel helpless to even try, but just try, right? If you don't try, then, you know, you, don't, you didn't try. So try, right? Um, how else can mentality uh, kind of show itself? Well, you know, confidence and giving up, right? So if you give up very early into a game or if you feel very uh, poor about yourself, like you, you have lack of self-confidence. So you, you're kind of like, you go in, you're like, you, you go in here and then you do something bad and then you, you, you die. And then you're like, okay, I'm never doing that again. That was awful. I, I suck. I'm really bad. Right. Don't do that. Right. Actually, it's funny. Cause I find myself doing this. I'm playing chess right now, learning chess a little bit. And I find myself doing this to myself. Like I suck. Wow. That's so bad. I'm horrible. Right. So you really got to not tell yourself that you got to be like, that was fine. I made a mistake. Let's try to learn from it. Right. That's fine. Let's try it again, but let's do something different next time. Let's try to do, let's have a different approach, right? So don't, don't flame yourself. That's another way that mentality can kind of rear its head. Um, how else can mentality, right? So, you know, don't flame, don't flame teammates. Don't, don't, you know, try to, try to relieve teammates whenever they're clashing, try to make things better instead of worse. Um, don't, don't flame yourself. Don't say negative things and don't give up too early. Um, never FF, right? It, it's very, sometimes very tempting to want to FF. But if you want to go far in this game, don't FF. It, and often, oftentimes games are never going to be FF'd anyways. Like I would say 95% of the times you actually try to FF, uh, unless it's like really later on in the game where it's like 10-0 or something, you're, you're probably, your team's probably not going to FF, even in lower ranks. People just don't like FFing a competitive game. And so what that's doing to your mentality is like saying, okay, I'm, I want to give up. So let's forfeit the game. But you want to be the person that's like, no, I don't want to forfeit the game. I want to keep playing, even if it means we're probably going to lose anyway, because I want to learn something. I want to improve anyway. Losing a game doesn't mean, even if we lose, right? We can still win, but even if we lose, there's something that I can learn that's very valuable from this game that can greatly increase my skill, right? That I can learn for future games, right? It's not, it's not just a lost cause. It's not just, oh, this is a loss, go next, right? Sometimes we want to do that, but I would argue heavily that giving up, even if it's like 10-0, is not healthy, right? It's not it's not good for your, your mentality. I'm guilty of FFing games, right? I'm guilty of wanting to just get out of games because it just feels like such a lost cause. And sometimes it's very hard to have the willpower to be like, yes, let's keep going, guys. It's 12-0, it's I want to I wanna learn more. Like, you know, I understand that, okay? And sometimes you have such atrocious teammates, you really want to just get out, but try not to, okay? Try your very best to not do that. So these are ways that mentality can really kind of uh, show themselves and really be important, right? If you don't have mentality under control, it's really going to negatively affect your gameplay. This is probably the single most important thing from iron to radiant, right? Radiant players often have really good mentalities. Not all of them, not all of them, but probably more so than other players. It's gonna be like one of the most fun ranks to actually play in just because people don't really get that upset with each other. And usually it's kind of like mutual understanding. You know, it's not like 
they're just screaming at each other. Sometimes it is, right? Sometimes it is, but usually it's not. It's not as bad as like plat or, you know, even like immortal is kind of bad. So I'll see you guys in the last tip. Okay, guys, so last but certainly not least, understand when and why you're rotating, okay? So especially as a duelist, not every role, and also understand not every role is going to be rotating in the same way. So if you're a duelist or an initiator, it's actually pretty acceptable to rotate early. However, if you're a sentinel, you're like a killjoy and you're playing here. back here or back here or here, here somewhere, usually it's more acceptable to kind of wait longer because you are, it's kind of accepted that you're the person that's anchoring down the site, right? So if you're a duelist and you're like, you're like, okay, I'm gonna peek B main and then you're peeking and there's nobody here, then as soon as I hear that, I'm gonna instantly start running away. Especially, especially if I know that the team I'm playing against likes to fast push, right? Because if they're fast pushing and they're not at B, that means they're probably A. They're, they might be yeah. doing something mid, but they're probably gonna be at A, right? Similarly, if I'm playing A and I don't hear anything, it's a fast pushing team. And, you know, I know that they're a fast pushing team. I'm gonna quickly start rotating and coming toward B. However, if I'm, if I know I'm playing against a team, it's been like five or six rounds and so far they've been playing really slow and I'm, I'm borderline falling asleep, right? I'm, I'm sitting here waiting and you know, one's like lurking here. up. So, you know, if I don't hear anything and I, I know I'm, I'm playing against people that are playing slow, I'm not necessarily gonna instantly rotate just cause I need to have a little more patience in that situation. So th this is really just kind of showcasing that there's actually a little more thought that goes into rotating than you might think, but it's not really super hard. It's also very easy to rotate. Uh, and then, so like say you, you rotate here. here and then by the time you get to A, the enemy team's actually also rotating back around to where you came from. So that's kind of annoying, but that doesn't also happen all the time. That just happens sometimes. So another thing you can do is you like kind of walk up and take a take position if you think they're A. But if you think you're playing it's a rotating team and you know that they're Here. your team's like they're A, they're A, they're A, and you're like, nah guys, they're gonna rotate to B. And so you can come up here, push up like this, find a good spot here. And then just wait, right? Who's gonna clear this corner? Who's gonna come through spawn and be like, oh, he's right here. No, nobody does that. So you can chill right here, let them walk here. past you and kill like three people. Nice trigger discipline. And so this is only, the only reason you would ever here. play here is if you think like, if you are very confident in the fact that they're gonna come back and rotate, right? If they've rotated every single round for six rounds and you caught onto that, like they start here. A and then they go B and they start B here. and they go A, and then they do that for like four more rounds then obviously this is a pattern that you can take advantage of. And it's very important to take advan advantage of patterns in enemy um, gameplay or in, in enemy behavior because that's half the battle, right? If you can predict where enemies are gonna push or what they're gonna do in a certain situation, then you just win the round here. If there's three and you, you kill all three and you don't whiff, like, you know, don't spray with a vendor like I just did, you kill all three, that's fantastic. And you just won yourself the round, basically. You got the spike, it's 5v2 probably. And, you know, that's basically the round. So, otherwise, guys, you know, you can rotate through spawn. Uh, basically, just understand when and why you're rotating. Also, understand if your role should be, or if you're, even if your agent should be rotating super early, or if you should be a little more patient, okay? And also take into account what the enemies are doing and how they've been playing in the past. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to get coaching from me on Discord. Link is down in the description below to add me on Discord. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Much love, guys. Peace.